Hello Makeup Void, I'm Trin and welcome or welcome back to my channel. So <laughs> in today's video, this is kind of like my husband made me do it. I used to be called the Makeup Schizophrenic and then I changed my name to Trinity May and then I, I have filmed a video talking about why I did the name change but he really was like you should have stuck as Makeup Schizophrenic. So we're going back in time and I'm going to do a video talking about what schizophrenia is. I'm going to touch a little bit on schizoaffective disorder but it's gonna kind of be a sidestep. A lot of this info you can just research yourself but sometimes it's nice just to watch a video about it and I don't really expect you to watch this video. I expect you to have this video on in the background just like as you're doing dishes or painting your nails or something. So that's kind of the point of this video. A little bit of research, a little bit of sharing personal experiences with this disorder. I did take, I, I kind of wrote a script just to kind of keep me focused so I will be referencing that little script and then and just let's go ahead and get rolling. I just tend to refer to schizophrenia as the invisible illness. This is something that the media does as a shit job as kind of like showing a lot of people or if you watch the news you'll hear or I'm already getting tongue dyed. So, in real life, you might just imagine a homeless person just like muttering nonsense into the void on the street, and then the media does a horrible job at reporting about vicious crimes and then just tacking on that they have schizophrenia. So, there is this wide notion that schizophrenics are violent, but they are more likely to be victims of abuse because they can't tell what is normal, they are fractured in their perspective of reality. And I am speaking from a personal experience. I technically have schizoaffective disorder, but due to insurance purposes, my doctor had to diagnose me as schizophrenia. Which, if I film more mental health videos, I might touch base on that. But schizophrenics are more likely to be victims of abuse because they just get so locked into their head and they don't have a concept of what normal is. Statistically, I have some worldwide statistics. It's about 1 in 285 people or you might see 1 in 300 people just to round up. It's about 3% of Americans, 3% 3, 3 of Americans, like 2.8 million, or if you have schizoaffective disorder, the diagnosis or the statistics go down to about 1%. So you could be part of the lovely 1% if you have a severe mental illness, which is absolutely lovely. So it is pretty rare. I work in a mental health care facility, so I see schizophrenia all the time. So my brain is like, it's not that rare in actuality. It's like, yeah, it's, it's pretty rare. So, just in my little world, it is quite frequent. Something that I see on a regular basis. But no, they're not violent. They can be agitated and confused in their disorder, especially if they're in an episode. But with right medications and diligence on taking medication, if you have a mental illness in general and you are taking your meds, or if you are on medication, take your meds. We'll say that. I don't care if you have just depression or schizophrenia, schizoaffective disorder, bipolar disorder, I highly recommend you seek help and get on medication. And for schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder, it's almost mandatory that you're on medications in order to just sort of function. <sighs> yeah, you just, I don't want to say everyone needs to be on medication, but when it comes to schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder, get on meds, take your meds, be diligent in that, because without them, it is rough. It's rough. Real rough. So, uh, when it comes to symptoms of schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder, I gotta stop saying and schizoaffective disorder, because we'll get to it, but there are two types of symptoms. There are positive and negative symptoms. Positive symptoms are gen generally what schizophrenics have and other people do not. And negative symptoms are symptoms that other people have that you do not. 
and you will see a lot in the negative symptoms that it's like, wow, this sounds like ADHD, this sounds like bipolar disorder, this sounds like this, it sounds like even autism. And just because you have some of these negative symptoms does not automatically have schizophrenia. I like to think of mental illness as a rainbow in a form of blend of just because you have some of the symptoms, like if you want to call like schizophrenia like a red, you know, there's different shades of reds, there's different variants, it's not just black and white, so just keep that great assault. Anyways, positive symptoms, so the reason why you're, you all are here, it's the most common, hearing and seeing voices that are not real. I largely deal with auditory hallucinations and then a little bit of visual. It's not like, for, for, for me, for me, it is not necessarily that I see things, but it's just my brain is so imaginative that when I hear the voices, I can very clearly tell what they look like, what they sound like. Their intentions are a little bit of, I don't know, can you tell me? And then they're very vague and then I get frustrated by that. Very frustrated. Because I want to know what their end game is. But but hallucinations can be more than just visual and auditory they can also be tactile they can be smell they can be taste it really can be any of the five senses so in the past i have experienced tactile hallucinations like hands around my throat cat scratches spiders crawling on my skin i haven't experienced those sort of hallucinations in years but i definitely have experience with them and when you're dealing with any of these hallucinations, it's scary as heck, especially if you don't know what's going on, especially if you're not diagnosed. It is frightening. Absolutely fluffing frightening. So another big symptom is paranoia. My big paranoia is finding like somebody from my past, finding out where I work and then coming to my job and confronting me and sh should not see this but it's very easy to dox me on the internet i have a linkedin profile if you do enough research you can figure it out i don't want you to figure it out but it's definitely possible because hey this girl is looking for a new job uh, looking for a new job gotta stick up with the career career social media gotta st stick with the career social media in order to make that happen so that's sort of like where i'm coming from it's just this severe paranoia and as of late the paranoia has gotten so bad that i don't want to leave the house and like it's borderline becoming agoraphobic like the only time i want to leave the house like i have to leave the house for work is to like get groceries and thai food and in terms of today go to a concert like those are the times that i'm okay with leaving the house but even then my paranoia is so bad that i'm going to run into them and we from my last stalking session of this person they live multiple states away and in the actuality of them coming to my job is so minimal it's nearly non-existence but just that paranoia is so real that it's like I can't manage it. Visual, visual, visual and auditory hallucinations for me are basically on a daily basis. I have some good days, I have some bad days, but largely it's pretty freaking. It is pretty, I have a hair somewhere. It is pretty regular and even with medications, because I am medicated and I do stay on top of my meds, you can still deal with the symptoms of schizophrenia. It just, the medications makes it more manageable. And actually I am in the process of trying a new medication because another big thing is that schizophrenia is very treatment resistant. So it's hard for people with this disorder to continually take their meds when it's such a medicated 
medically resisted treatment that you just sort of want to give up you don't want to take your meds because they're not working things are working out things aren't working out the way you want them to and you just sort of want to give up and i would just encourage you if you are on medication if you are on medication for anything also the side effects really fluffing suck like they suck so so much and you just can't give up in trying new ones like just never give up and there was actually a new medication like a like approved in september brand new medication that i am trying because i at this point am so desperate for it and another big thing is that not only schizophrenia is so hard to treat and in terms of like it being a medicated resisted treatment is that a lot of people don't like scientists that research mental illness for a reason can't pinpoint where the cause of it is and is it genetic is it environmental I think for me at least is a little bit of both I have family that don't have schizophrenia but they struggle with mental illness in general and so I wonder if part of my if part of my deal is dealing with who my makeup drawer is a mess their positive symptom we let me backtrack so we've talked about hallucinations we've talked about paranoia and delusions Delusions can really be about anything. People are stalking you. The government is tracking you. For me, a large part of my delusions, actually, like, all of my delusions are religious-based. Um, I filmed a video years and years ago about how <laughs> in my early tweens, tweens, teens, and late twenties, early twenties, late teens, early twenties, let's get on track. I went to a church that I consider a cult. You can't convince me otherwise that it's not a cult. So, and that was when my, at least when I believe that church really sparked my psychosis. I think I've always experienced psychosis in one way or another. It just was like manageable and because I wasn't like a rowdy boisterous kid, it just sort of went undiagnosed and also I started going to church when I was 10 years old. My parents didn't believe in mental illness. So I got that going for me. But my delusions really kicked started when I started going to this whole church. Thought I was hearing God, was speaking in tongues. And just be and another positive symptom is like fractured speak or babbling in like a foreign language that you don't know or just like muttering nonsense and just because you believe in speaking tongues like that is a religious conversation for another day but just because you believe in speaking tongues and speaking tongues i'm not saying that you're schizophrenic i'm just saying it was definitely a symptom for me so i thought i was hearing god i was speaking in tongues i thought i was a prophet i thought i was gonna usher in the end times and by the time I was 25 years old and I would be not only the ones ushering in the end times but I was going to be the one to save the world and I am 31 years old and I can tell you that six years ago the world did not end and we might think that the world is ending now but trust me it's not maybe it is I don't know <laughs> I don't I don't I don't know maybe the end times are coming I, but it's not like something that I think that like I'm actively playing a role of and that I'm going to stop the end times from coming so, but in the light of the recent news events, maybe the world is ending. I don't know. But those are generally the positive symptoms of schizophrenia, and it's generally those where you will receive a schizophrenic diagnosis. But let's talk about negative symptoms. So, negative symptoms, we have, like, missing pieces of the usual self. So, it's kind of, like staying motivated is a big part of schizophrenia and like not having the will or the drive to do like basic human things like showering taking care of yourself self-care lol what what is self-care 
If you're schizophrenic, what is self-care? Brushing your teeth, showering, just sort of basic human necessities are hard to fathom even doing. And it's kind of like with this negative symptom that people are like, oh, you're just lazy. Oh, you don't clean the house? You're just lazy. You're just this. You're just that. And it's like, no, I'm not just lazy. It's literally feeling like, ha, huh, you see that there's not true. <laughs> I got sunscreen on my shirt. <laughs> That's the last symptom of schizophrenia. That's just me being a dumb bird. <sighs> okay. So, just things like that. Um, and decreased joy and happiness. You know, it's, it's a lot like depression. You just, no matter how you try, you just can't seem to be happy. And that is, it's just part of schizophrenia. It's just part of life. It's just that decreased joy and happiness. Also, showing and sharing emotions. Showing emotions is so incredibly hard to do. I am very animated, so I don't really deal with this aspect of schizophrenia. It's part of why I have to do my makeup as I film this video because I have to keep moving. I need the distraction of applying makeup to keep me focused even though it's also distracting me at the same time. So a lot of these negative symptoms look a lot like ADHD and just because you have ADHD does not mean you're schizophrenic. It just is another symptom that you struggle with. And I've gone to my doctor a couple times being like, hey, I think I have ADHD. And she's been like, we're not going to talk about it. And I'm like, okay, okay. But I really think I'm struggling with this. And then like, as of late, she finally agreed that to try ADHD medication once I get regulated with this new one. So fingers crossed for me. That fingers crossed for me that a little bit of ADHD medications helps me stay focused. And then lastly, social withdrawal. And just socializing is hard. I think it's hard for a lot of people, but I feel like with schizophrenia, it is taken to a whole new level. Again, with the paranoia, people are following you government's tracking you, makes you afraid to leave the house, and it's almost due to this lack that you have with other people in terms of like, you just don't trust other people, whether you share your diagnosis or not because you want to appear normal, but you're also just so paranoid that it's almost like a defense mechanism. In a, in a sense. Cognitive symptoms. I've already sort of touched on this, but it's like memory problems. I can't remember shit, dude. Like, if it's not a script that I'm writing for YouTube, if it is not written down, if it's not on a sticky note, if it's not on an app on my phone, I just cannot remember anything. And, you know, practice takes time. All this stuff so it's not like I'm forgetting everything at my job at the same time I am forgetting how to do my job and I just need like those sticky note reminders like oh you gotta do this oh you gotta do that and I joke with my friends at work where it's like oh you need to do this and I'm like I mean you're expecting me to do my job wait because my memory is just so bad and again that could be like ADHD or it could also be schizophrenia. I don't know. Either way, my memory sucks. Memory sucks. So also, difficulty in understanding and making decisions. That is such, so incredibly hard. So that could be like just a massive sense of like, I need a brushy. What brushy do I need? I don't think it's clean. Let's do this one. So. Uh, difficulty in understanding making decisions. And that could really feed into the positive symptoms of this disorder. 
because you just it's this fractured sense of reality not knowing what is real not comprehending what is real and because of that you struggle making decisions because it's like once <clears throat> I think I'm for a schizophrenic very self-aware in my disorder which is quite a positive thing and I do I have learned over the years how to like read people and differentiate like just sort of my levels of psychosis and like paranoia so I am very self-aware and I would consider myself a high functioning schizophrenic but at the same time the struggle is just so enormous where it's like I can't can't fathom anything Papa Yellow in the inner corner. I feel like at this point I need to start narrating my makeup because I'm getting so distracted and off center. And also we're almost done. <laughs> so, huh. let's talk a little bit. Do I have all my notes? Okay, I've touched on like environmental, <laughs> environmental versus genetic. I think for me it's a little bit of both. But at the end of the day, like, no one really knows anything about mental illness, and especially schizophrenia. Like, just, nobody knows. Nobody knows! <laughs> it's frustrating. It's so frustrating. Nobody knows what's going on. So let's talk a little bit about schizoaffective disorder. Let's just touch on it real quick, because there's really not much I can say about it that with what we haven't already covered it's schizophrenia with a mood disorder so all the symptoms of schizophrenia but tack on either depression or bipolar on top of it if i was on so i have schizoaffective disorder my subtype is bipolar i think i was originally diagnosed with the depressive subtype which at the time kind of made sense because when I first went to see a doctor I was just like I'm gonna go to them they're gonna tell me I'm depressed they're gonna prescribe me antidepressants and then I'm never going to see them again I'm just I didn't know anything about healthcare or mental illness or anything I was just like I'm depressed they're gonna tell me that and never gonna deal with them again I thought medication was just one size fits all you know what, I'm going to have to do zero work into this, into figuring out anything. They're just going to leave me with depression and I will just always be on antidepressants. And thankfully, as of this year, I'm not on an antidepressant anymore. I, after eight years, it's pretty much has been, November, yeah, November is when I started seeing a doctor so eight years ago <sighs> time flies time flies man but yeah as of eight years ago i have been on an antidepressant and i need a brow gel and this year i was finally able to break free of that but that's not the case for everybody do i think i'll ever not be on an antipsychotic no i have gone through spells since my diagnosis where I haven't been on antipsychotic because again finding the right medication is just so incredibly hard where it's like you just want to give up and so have there been times since my diagnosis there have been times since my diagnosis do I add more blush I think we add more blush there have been times that I have not been on an antipsychotic and then stuff gets bad again and then I get put back on antipsychotic and then I look back on my non-antipsychotic self and I'm like dang girl should have been on antipsychotic why'd you stop you're a dumb bird you are a dumb bird you should always be on an antipsychotic but also I do consider myself high functioning like I do consider myself a high functioning schizophrenic 
So there has been times where it's like, I don't need one. I don't. I'm good. I'm Gucci. I don't need an antipsychotic. And I do, y'all. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I'm not trying to, like, go into babble when I make that sound. For me, it's just like, I can't find what I need. Ugh. All right. So, schizo if you think schizophrenia is hard to diagnose, you have not done any research into schizoaffective disorder because you can be schizoaffective. I was very fortunate. Let's go back to my first experience with my doctor. So, I didn't know this at the time. I chose my psychiatrist because she was pretty, and that was my deciding factor. Is <laughs> why I chose my psychiatrist is that she was pretty. And, but I didn't know until like years later that she was like fresh out of med school and she specialized in schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. So I don't know how long it took for her to diagnose me as schizoaffective disorder. Even though I was pretty upfront with the voices like pretty much right away. <laughs> and I gave her my journal where I had written down like all the voices in my head and like their names and the things that they say and do and how they look like. And <laughs> So she was able to diagnose me with schizoaffective disorder pretty quickly, and I was just like, what? I have what? What? To terms with a diagnosis is hard enough in and of itself. Who was that hard? Because, again, I thought I just had depression. And... And another, I'm getting distracted because I'm doing my lip. But a big thing is just, yeah, it's coming to terms with the fact that you are different and that there's a reason. My doctor was fresh out of med school. She specialized in schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. So I was very fortunate in that aspect. But it's so hard <laughs> to diagnose it so incredibly hard because you can be bipolar with psychotic with you can be bipolar with psychosis you can be I think there is it's really small and I'm not quite sure how different it is but you can also have schizotypical personality disorder and I've done I've done research on that in the past, but nothing recent, so I can't really elaborate on that. But it's just, you could also probably be like, I don't know. But schizoaffective disorder is just so incredibly hard to diagnose, and I don't really know what makes you like bipolar with psychotic symptoms versus schizoaffective. But it's just a hard thing to navigate. And coming to terms with my diagnosis was so hard because I thought literally for years that, you know, I was like genuinely hearing God. And from a religious point of view, coming from like a cult church and not comprehending that it was a cult church, thinking that it was the end of be all and that you were a prophet and everything, and kind of coming to terms with the fact that you're not a prophet. And that you are just this weird little girl is just terrifying, honestly. It was so incredibly scary. So, that's... I pretty much timed this perfectly. Didn't even mean to. Didn't even mean to. <laughs> if y'all want more mental health videos, I'm never going to, like, go back to changing my channel name as the makeup schizophrenic that's never going to happen but if you don't want more mental health content please let me know i can definitely revisit older mental health content videos and kind of like 
the biggest thing that I'm thinking of is redoing the six myths about schizophrenia and schizoaffective disorder. I kind of touched on some of those myths in this video, but if you want a full-fledged video talking about some common myths about the disorders, please let me know. If you have a lot more questions about the disorder, A, do your own research, two, don't listen to me, three, let me know your questions down below and I can film like a schizophrenia answering your questions get ready with me style because I really need to apply my makeup at the same time as doing these videos so I stay on track and get distracted at the same time so I want to thank y'all so much for watching today's video if you like it click the like button if you dislike it click the dislike button I hope you stick around and subscribe I always say have joy at the end of all these videos because it's just a reminder to you and to me to always be on the lookout for joy even when you're depressed even if you're going through a manic episode or dealing with voices and feels like there's no end in sight and you're just delusions and your paranoia is just so bad just always try to find joy in every single day whether it's just thinking that you have breath in your lungs just something I didn't go into treatment options besides taking your meds, but I think that is worth having another video for about talking about treatment options, so I might do that as well. So, as always, have joy, and bye! <laughs>